Hi everyone! My name is Alyssa and welcome to this week's tutorial. I'm the teaching artist with BMCYF Space to Create program and what we're going to be doing this week is a Van Gogh inspired self-portrait. Vincent Van Gogh is a Dutch post-impressionist painter and he was one of the most famous artists and one of the most influential artists to Western art. So you will probably recognize one of his most famous paintings, which is Starry Night. So we're going to be doing a portrait based on his style because he did a lot of portraits in his lifetime. So I hope you enjoy this video and let's get started. So here are the supplies that I'm going to be using today. So I've got my paint brushes and I'm going to need some paper towel and some water. And then I'm also going to be using a mirror for the self portrait. So that way I can see myself while I am drawing. And then I'm going to be doing this in acrylic paints. So I've got all my acrylic paints here. And then I've got some mixed media paper. All right, so let's get to it. So unfortunately I couldn't record myself while I was using the mirror to draw my sketch uh, because it was in the way of my camera. But uh, this is the finished drawing, so all I did was use my mirror and I just sketched what I was seeing in the mirror. And when you do your sketch, don't add any shading because you're going to be shading with the paint. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my brush and I'm going to create a bluish green. And so I used my blue and my yellow and some white and created this kind of aqua blue color. And I'm using this color because I'm looking at a Van Gogh portrait that he did in September of 1889. And it's an oil painting and it was said to be one of his last portraits. And it's a pretty famous one, so I'm kind of looking at that and referencing it as I go. So I'm going to be using some blues and greens in this portrait. And what I'm doing with this color is just doing a solid layer of this color and filling it in really well and going all the way around the background. I'm starting with the background because it's going to be a lot easier to do the background first and then do myself afterwards uh, because when I go to add my hair I'm going to do some strands and it's going to be hard to go in between those later on with the background so it's always better to start with what is in the background first and then the foreground next. So one thing that Van Gogh did a lot with his backgrounds was these kind of swirls that look very textured. And so I'm going to try to do that here. And so what I'm going to do is take a darker bluish green and I'm going to take a smaller brush and I'm going to create these swirls. And these swirls connect to each other using wavy lines. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. I'm doing these swirls very, uh, very kind of fast and not really perfect. Um, I don't want them to look perfect. I want areas where there's thicker paint and areas where there's less paint. That way it adds more texture. A fun fact you may not know about Van Gogh is that there are actually four other Vincent Van Goghs. So the artist was named after his stillborn older brother, who was in turn named after their grandfather. His brother Theo Van Gogh also named his child Vincent.
Now I'm going to take that color that I used for the background, but I'm going to add even more white to it. And then I'm going in between these swirls with it. I'm doing this with a drier paintbrush so that way it adds more texture to it. And that way you can still see the background color in between on some areas. Now I'm taking a skin tone color that I mixed using yellow, red, white, and then a tiny, tiny bit of black. I'm going to start out the same way as the background where I'm just going to do an entire block of this color all over the skin. And I'm going to make sure though that where my lines are, like for the nose and around the mouth, and the eyes, that I'm leaving a tiny bit of space in between these areas. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to cover that line and then I won't be able to see it anymore. So like with the nose, you'll see that I will leave a tiny bit of white just at that line where I have my pencil mark. That way I know exactly where that line is. I'll be going over it and filling it in when I get to the shading. Another interesting fact about Vincent van Gogh is that he wrote many letters in his lifetime, so over 800 letters, and that way his life was actually documented, so we actually know quite a bit about his life through these letters that he wrote. These letters are the most important source of information available on the life of van Gogh, and they provide a window into van Gogh's world. A lot of his letters were published in 1914, and you can read most of his letters online. So the next thing I'm going to do is begin shading. And so I'm taking the skin tone color and I mixed a little bit of the background color in with it. And so I'm using this color to begin with some of the shading. And what I'm doing is using these lines that are kind of almost like dashed lines, similar to what we learned in the Elements of Art videos. And he had a particular style in which he made the skin very textured. So that's what I'm going to be doing, um, kind of imitating that same thing by using these kind of hashed lines. The color that I'm starting out with for the shading is going to look a little harsh, but I'm going to be adding mid-tones into this and it's eventually going to blend it in with the base that, uh, that base skin color that I created. Ready or not, it's time for another interesting fact about Van Gogh. So another fact is that he only started painting at the age of 27. And when he started painting, he was completely self-taught. And most of his early paintings were not very colorful like a lot of the paintings he, does, he did later on in life. Um, they were very dull, and he painted a lot of the harsh realities of life. 
So people that were facing hardships in life and didn't have a lot of money were a common theme in many of his paintings. It was much later on in his career as an artist that he started using the vivid colors that he's so well known for today. When I'm creating these lines, it's almost as if I'm scratching the surface of the paper with my paintbrush. You can also notice that uh, since I'm using a darker color now, I can start to fill in some of these lines that I had. Uh, the white areas that I didn't want to cover yet. I can start to fill those in because now that darker color can define it for me. That way I know where those lines are. That way they don't get lost under my layers of paint. Now I'm just going back over certain areas that I want to brighten up and I'm adding some highlight and I'm doing this highlight again with these lines. Now I'm going to start taking a color that's more of a mid-tone, so it's in between my darker color and my lighter color, and I'm going to be just kind of blending things back. Uh, the color that I'm using is pretty similar to the, actually, the base color that I used originally. So I'm just taking that color and going around, still using these uh, lines kind of in a very textured way, and I'm just going around and evening out some areas, uh, taking away areas that are a little too dark, like around the eyes I have some area that's going to be a little too dark, so I'm going to want to go back over that and lighten it. Another fun fact about Van Gogh 
is that he tried many other careers before he declared himself an artist. So he attempted to be a art dealer, a school teacher, and even a preacher. Unfortunately, he had little success in any of these areas, and he eventually announced that he was going to become an artist in one of his letters that he wrote to his brother in 1880. Now because my hair is a dark brown, I'm starting with a brown that I mixed using my red and my yellow, and then I added uh, some black to it to create a brown. At the part of my hair up at the top there, I left some skin tone in between there uh, because everybody has a part that you can see and at that part you'll see the hairs where they connect to your scalp on one side and then also on the other side. So what I did was use my brush and I go in very thinly with some paint just to create those little hairs in that region. And that will make the hair look a lot more realistic. I'm going to be doing this on the side of my face as well uh, because when my hair is up you can see where the hair connects to my face. Um, so I'm going to be using some very very light thin lines to create hair there as well. I'll be going back over later with a smaller brush to do even more hair detail. When I'm doing these fine details like hair, I'm adding a little bit of water to my brush, but not too much that water is going to go onto my paper. Um, I just add a tiny bit of water and mix it with my paint, that way it just flows a little bit better, but that it's not too watery that it's going to cause me to make any mistakes. So by doing this you can get a lot more finer details, and it helps whenever you want to get smoother lines as well. Now I'm going to start the eyes by filling them in all with one color first. And the color that I use, I what I do is take the color around my iris. So if you look at your eye, you always have a little bit of a darker shade around your iris. And mine is pretty much black. So what I did was use this dark color. By starting with the color that's on the outside of my iris, so the darkest color of my eye, It'll make it a lot easier when I go back to highlight the eyes because all I have to do is add a lighter brown just around the pupil area and that way I already have that darkness around the iris. Um, that way I don't have to add it later because if I started with a lighter color and then had to add that around the eye, it's a lot harder to do that and to get that perfect circle while doing it. With the same color, I'm going to use it for the creases around my eyes as well.
I mixed a really light pinkish brown, very very light shade to use as the shading for my eye. If you look at your eyes in the mirror, you'll notice that they are not just white, there is shadows casting on them. So it's just like when we were doing the Elements of Art videos and you were shading a sphere. So when you shade that sphere, there's shadows on the sides of it, same thing as with your eye. So because of your eyelid up top, it's going to cast a little bit of a shadow. Same thing with the sides of your eyes too, depending on the lighting. There are also highlights in your eyes too, that I'm also going to be adding shortly. Now my eyes are pretty dark, but they are brown, so I'm going to be adding a little bit of a lighter brown around my eyes. That way you can see the difference between my pupil and my iris. Now I'm taking the same brown and I'm putting a little bit of water on my brush to make this brown a little bit more liquidy. Uh, and that way I can add these really fine hairs, and so I'm adding my eyelashes to the top and the bottom. I'm then going to take this color to shade my nose too. Now I'm taking pure white on a little brush and I'm going to add the highlight to my eyes. Now I'm gonna take some red and I'm going to start filling in my red lipstick. But I'm gonna do the same thing as I did with the skin tone where I'm going to leave a little bit of white spaced in between the upper lip and the bottom lip. That way I know where that line is. That way I don't go over it and then have to redraw it again. Then I'll just fill in that line with some shading. I'm going to mix a tiny bit of black in with the red for the shading. I'm only adding a shadow to the crease of my lips, and then I'll be adding a little bit of highlight on the bottom lower lip. Now I'm going back and adding a little bit of my braid in so that you can see it better, and then I'm going to take some water and mix it with my paint a little bit, and that way I can start doing some really fine details on the hair. I have frizzy hair, so I often have little flyaway hairs here and there. So I'm going to be taking this dark paint with the water and adding these hairs in. And because these are only individual strands of hair, I want to make these lines as small as I possibly can. Another cool fact about Van Gogh is that he has a painting that sold for $82.5 million in 1990. This painting is titled Portrait of Dr. Gachette, hopefully I'm saying that right, and it is one of the most expensive paintings in history.
The next thing I'm doing is filling in my shirt all black and I'm making sure that I'm adding the wrinkles in my shirt as well. If you have any wrinkles in your shirt like this, make sure that you add them because it's going to make it look a lot more realistic. Now keeping with the Van Gogh inspiration, I'm going to be using these lines just like I was for the face and adding them into the shirt as well. I'm using the color that I used for the swirls in the background to do this. All right, here is the finished painting. If you created your own self-portrait using this tutorial, please show us your work because we would really love to see it. And join me next week for another art tutorial with BMCYF's Space to Create program. See you next week.